Welcome to Shock Radio, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that was a sermon that was preached right after 911. And, you know, I'm out here in California, so I want to talk to you about what I call the stupidity of the shooting in San Bernardino, California. You know, I'm so tired of watching these needless, stupid shootings on TV when it's so easily solved. It could be so easily remedied. So I'd like to read you something uh, from the Declaration of Independence. Listen to these epic words. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another. Now listen closely to this next phrase here. And to assume among the powers of the earth, here it is, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes held them to the separation. So right off the bat, our founders, and every one of them signed it in the year of our Lord, referring to Jesus Christ, down at the bottom where they signed. Not an atheist in the bunch, by the way. This is why atheism is so evil and damaging, because it says, no, you, you don't have these rights. We're going to tell you what rights you're going to have. Our founders didn't believe that. They believe these rights come directly from God. And it's the government's job to protect those rights. That come from where? From God. This is why atheism and Islam uh, are so dangerous, carried to their logical conclusion. Listen to this. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Listen closely, guys. Listen to this. That all men are what? Created equal. That they are endowed by their creator. Now, creator is capitalized referring to divinity of God. With certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and their pursuit of happiness. Now, look at what they thought the job of the government was. That to grant these rights, no, it doesn't say grant. That to give these rights doesn't say give. It says secure. That to secure these rights, where are the rights coming from? Directly from God. Governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That when any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, and this is some very controversial phrase right here in the Declaration of Independence, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes, and accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. Do you guys hear what they're saying here in the Declaration of Independence? They went on to say, but when a long train of abuses and insurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, this is what they're saying about the people having this right, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. Now, 
first of all, we're going to talk about what happened in San Bernardino. I think it was just utter stupidity, just shameful, that in the very liberal state of California, people are not given the right to themselves to the full extent of of what our founders would want. You know, um, I uh, owned some firearms, and I, I went to the uh, the gun store, and this was I, – I had uh, purchased a, another AR-15, right? And so I went to the gun store, and I was like, oh, my gosh, what a – I bought the gun prior to – uh, the uh, remember there was the abortion the guy that shot at, shot up people at the uh, Planned Parenthood place and I was like oh great you know what a time for me to purchase the uh, the rifle you know and then and then because um, I knew when I went to go pick it up because you know every time you get one you got to wait like ten days um, so I knew when I went to go pick it up there was going to be people like camped outside because every time there's a shooting people freak out that our government which is hostile to the rights of people to bear arms. I mean, let's just be honest, guys. I'm not going to beat around the bush. The government of the United States, and I love the U.S., but they're hostile um, to the rights of people to bear arms. And little by little, they are infringing on that right. We all know it. Let's just say it. So people are scared of the hostility that this government has against them in the right to bear arms. And so every time there's a shooting... Um, it's so ridiculous, rather than getting to the root of the problem, the liberal state over here in California, they go after an inanimate object. Can you imagine you and I are walking down the street and some crazed nut job individual, he starts coming down the street to kill you, and I push you out of the way to save your life, and I get killed by this guy, right? You wouldn't go up to the car and start kicking the car saying, this evil car, how could the car do this? You know, we got to do something about these cars. What idiot would do that? They're called liberal Californians, folks. They're called liberal people in Washington. There's a name for people that think that way. It's idiots. (laughs) It's totally stupid. But there's something more underlying that is more evil than this. They want to disarm the American populace. This is what they have to do to bring in the new world order. Okay, so it's it's by design. They're not just stupid, they're evil. And they know that, um, and I'm going to give you some other quotes here, like what Patrick Henry said, they know that some uh, a country that is not armed cannot keep their government in check. And that's one mistake I think the NRA makes. They talk a lot about hunting and things like that. But we need to be bold and say why this right to bear arms was given uh, to Americans um, and the founders believed they had this right to protect themselves from God. Even Jesus said, if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Um, I was recently at church, i got to tell you something, not to get sidetracked, and this had happened right after the uh, Planned Parenthood, those people that killed the babies down there at Planned Parenthood. So right after... I don't know who's more evil, the guy that killed the the people or the people killing the babies. I mean, who do you want to stand in front of God uh, as? I mean, both of them are evil. But, I mean, can you imagine you're killing this innocent baby? Um, I definitely wouldn't want to stand in God in, in front of God with that, and I don't want to stand in front of God as some nut job that's killing someone that works at the abortion clinic. Both of them are evil, as far as I'm concerned. So, but anyways, um, I was at church, and one of the pastors came out, and he spoke, and he said, you know what, we're going to have people carrying firearms. And he quoted what I just quoted. He quoted the passage where Jesus said to protect himself. He was talking to his disciples, and he said, look, if you don't have a sword, which is the weapon of that time, you better go out and buy one. He told them to actually buy one. Um, So... I think people that defend themselves when they buy these firearms, they're not doing it to harm someone. They're doing it to protect themselves from harm. One of the problems um, that I saw when I was watching this, you know, unfold on TV is the sadness of people having to cower underneath the tables and cower because they can't shoot back. If this would have happened in Texas, those people would have looked, terrorists would look like Swiss cheese. If I would have been there at this meeting, um, as long as I wasn't the first person that they were shooting, 
I guarantee you those terrorists wouldn't be alive today. If I would have been there with my AR-15, 5.56 rounds, they would not have been alive today, and a lot more people would have been had their lives saved. But the stupidity of the liberals in California, and I do think that even though they're not responsible for the killing of the people in San Bernardino, they are responsible. I do believe that the liberals in California are responsible for the amount of people that were killed because it cannot be denied that if people in that room were able to have firearms, you know, less people would have died. Um, same thing with, uh, remember Henry Kissinger talked about this when he even talked on a grander scale about nuclear weapons. He said, do you know because of nuclear weapons, that's why we have less wars. He goes, if we didn't have nuclear weapons, can you imagine if the U.S. didn't have nuclear weapons? Overnight, we'd be invaded. China and Russia would just roll through us. It, it is because a person or a country is well defended that they're less likely to be attacked. They're not more likely to be attacked when they're well defended. But let's talk about, um, besides the stupidity of California, Let's talk about a very dicey topic about Islam. You know, Islam believes, if you've ever studied it, they believe, this is the official Islamic religion, what they believe. They believe, if you're listening to this radio show, that you are either in the house of Islam or the house of war. Let me explain. I'm a Christian. So if I'm talking to you, the way that I look at you is, are you saved or not saved? And, of course, I want you saved because I love you, and, you know, I'm a sinner that needs salvation, and I, I care about people. I love them, and I want them to be saved. I also want them to be well protected from harm. So in, when I look at someone, it is true that I have a different worldview than a Muslim or even an atheist. I look at them, and I say, are they saved or not? And that's kind of where I start and if they're not saved, of course I want them to be saved. You know, like uh, Carter Conlon just said in that speech at the opening of this radio show, this is a war for the souls of men. And we wrestle not against um, flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. But it's good to be well defended, like Jesus said when he told them to buy a sword. Remember um, the song by Sting, We Are Spirits in the Material World? That is so true. We're literally spiritual, um, but we're in a material world. But anyways, back to this. So in Islam, the way they look at it, they don't look at it like, are you saved or not? Because there's no Jesus Christ that has come to save. According to them, they believe he's just a man, which I'm going to talk to, uh, see if I have time, I want to talk to our our uh, Muslim listeners right now, those of you that are with Islam, want to tell you something about Jesus Christ. Well, let's actually let's talk about that cause, right now because that's very important. Remember, Jesus tells the parable where he says that this um, this father he's sending all these people to his vineyard to check on it, and these represent the prophets of God over time. And the Muslims agree on that. God's sending these prophets, and they keep killing all these prophets, but then. The master of the household says, I'm going to send my son. And Jesus is talking about this specifically. He goes, I'm going to send my son. And the uh, workers at the vineyard, they'll respect him. And maybe they'll respect him and, and they'll uh, treat him differently than all these other prophets that have been sent, that they've, that they've beat up and they've killed. But what happens is, Jesus says, but when they see that they're sending that the master is sending his son, they're like, ah, oh, this is the heir. You know, we could own all of this. Let's kill the son. And Jesus talks about himself as the son of God. They asked Jesus, are you the Messiah? He said, I am. Remember in um, the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane, easy for me to say, um, when Jesus was praying, and it was almost like drops of blood were falling from him, and the guards came to get him, and they said, who do you look for? And he, they said, Jesus. And he said, I am he. And the, just the glory and the power of what he said, they fell back. If you read that part in Scripture. So Jesus claims to be the Son of God. He claims to be our salvation. But in Islam, there really is no salvation. In fact, Allah is called the deceiver. 
in Islam. There's no real security of your salvation. If you were uh, a Muslim, let's say you and I are Muslims and we died, it would be perfectly in Allah's nature to say, ha ha, you know what, I'm not letting you in. I'm the deceiver. It says it right there in the Quran. So the nature of Allah, which means God, is different in the Quran. And by the way, the Quran was written like like approximately 600 years after uh, the Bible was. So my problem is carry, Islam carried to its logical conclusion, it is dangerous. And I know a lot of people don't want to say it because they, they have these jobs with CNN and Fox News. Maybe they don't want to lose their job. But I don't have to worry about that. I'm just some independent uh, radio guy over here. And um, in Islam, you're either in the house of Islam, which means you've submitted to Islam, or you're in the house of war. You can look this up. Go do an internet search, Islam, house of war. So you know how when I look at you, I'm like, are you saved or are you not saved? And of course, if you're not saved, you know, I can't coerce you into it, but I'm going to reason with you and use logic and scripture and talk to you about getting saved, how we're all sinners, we all fall short of God's glory and his standard of uh, righteousness. You know, that's what I'll do. But it's different in Islam. You can deceive just like Allah says he's a deceiver, you can do what you need to do to bring people and to to force them into the house of Islam. So there's the house of Islam and there's the house of war. So if you're listening to this right now and you're not Muslim like, like me, I'm not Muslim, I'm Christian, you and I are both considered in the house of war. And so until people submit they're always going to be in the house of war. So knowing this, we need to be well protected. You guys need to get yourself a firearm. You need to get yourself a gun because they're going up in price. They're also, quite frankly, great investments. I've seen rifles that were like 500 bucks. Now they're over 1000 like within a year and a half time. Listen to this. Patrick Henry said, quote, and he was talking about the Second Amendment, the great object is that every man be armed and everyone who is able may have a gun. Now, he said this at the, at the Virginia Convention when they're ratifying the Constitution. Now, some people believe that, no, the government – Someone beside you should have control over your safety. Look what Patrick Henry said about this idiotic um, thought process or worldview that you're so stupid you can't defend yourself. L- listen to what Patrick Henry said. Are we at last brought to such humiliating and debasing degradation? He was offended by that idea that we cannot be trusted with arms for our defense? Where is the difference between having arms in possession and under our direction and having them under the management of Congress? If our defense be the real object, he said, of having those arms, in whose hands can they be trusted with more propriety or equal safety to us as in our own hands? In other words, if, if the whole Second Amendment is designed to protect us, then who is more likely to protect yourself than you? Patrick Henry went on to say, guard with jealous attention the public liberty, suspect everyone who approaches that jewel. Unfortunately, nothing will preserve it, and this is very controversial what he says here, but downright force. Whenever you give up that force, you are inevitably ruined. So that's kind of um, a disagreement I have, like with the way that the NRA approaches things where they talk about hunting and things like that. I think people just need to be honest and say, look, the Second Amendment was designed in case our government got so corrupt that the people could rise up in unison and get their government back in line, get an honest government, where our government's not taken over by communists or socialists. <laughs> Or liberals, dear Lord.
Lord, let it not be so. So I just think, you know, I, I don't want to turn the TV on again and see people cowering under the tables as bullets are flying around and, and going around the, um, the whole building, and they're cowering there. Don't you agree with me that that's stupid? It's stupid. I mean, um, remember there was the school shooting, and those high school kids were just going through the school. I mean, they were there for like 10, 15 minutes just shooting, having a shooting spree, and, and the people, listen, the kids and the school teachers were cowering underneath the desk. That's pathetic that in America we don't protect ourselves. We're not allowed to protect ourselves. I'm telling you, if I was at that uh, San Bernardino meeting, things would have been a lot different, unless they would have shot me first. Now, can you imagine in Texas if this happened? <laughs> if this happened in Texas, they would look like Swiss cheese before they even got off the second round. Or If they, if, if they came in a room like that in Texas with those, I believe they were like AK-style-looking uh, rifles, and if they came in uh, to Texas with those AK-style type rifles, um, as soon as they start pointing them at people, you'd hear, <laughs> and they'd have all these other rifles pointing back at them. Listen, um, I am totally supportive of our U.S. government. You know, I believe we change it the legal way. However, I'm not supportive of people that are hypocrites, and I do think it's very hypocritical that people like Harry Reid – and Obama and Nancy Pelosi have people with guns protecting them. They actually have that. If The way it should be is this. If you're so pro-gun control, disarm your bodyguards. That's, that's what people should do. Set the example. Let's say I'm gun control. I want gun control. Of course, my form of gun control is putting an EOTech holographic sight on the um, – on the rail and aiming carefully and steadily while squeezing the trigger. <laughs> That's my form of gun control, controlling the shot into the bullseye. But if I was gun control, let's say anti-Second Amendment, I was a commie, a liberal, let's say I was like that, well, then I should set the example. I should disarm. Well, if Obama hates guns, he should disarm his security guards. If uh, Nancy Pelosi hates guns, she should, should disarm hers. Set the example. Um, why do our police, who we support, if guns are so bad, then why do they have them? Why, do, why doesn't the police disarm? Now, here's another thing that's really sad, too, speaking of that. Don't you guys think it was just pathetic how – those terrorists were able to go in there and everyone's cowering and they're hiding and bullets are flying all around, killing all those people. And we just have to accept that? We're supposed to sit here and accept that? No, no, no. That's why when I went to the gun store um, to pick up my gun, I don't even know if I finished that story. I got an AR-15. When I went to pick it up, 40% of the people camped out there were women. Women don't feel protected. They want to feel protected you hear about that story that woman um she had a, a little gun it was like a little 38 like derringer in her purse and she was going up to the atm and and they went to um rob her and she pulled out the gun and the guy ran compared to other stories i've heard where the women are going to the atm and they don't have any way to protect themselves and they end up in the trunk murdered this should not be happening in america and i do believe the liberals bear responsibility for this happening it it's a crime that people can go in and shoot up everyone like that. And then here's another thing. I, we're going off the air in about a minute. But let me tell you guys something. Here's another thing that was kind of stupid. When I'm looking at it on TV, just the tragedy of it. Our hearts go out to these people being shot. But then after the shooters leave and the terrorist nut jobs leave, you have hundreds of people, all these police, show up after the fact. Well, what good is that going to do? The problem is, is they're never going to, unless you have 
uh, like Obama does in Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid, for example, and uh, the George Bush, how they have guards with them at all time. Unless you have guards with you at all time, you're toast. You need to buy a gun. It's the Christian thing to do. It's the American thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. And you better do it. Listen, you better do it before they outlaw it. What I got to say, if people want to come get my guns, come and get them. Good luck with that. But if I would have been there in San Bernardino, things would have been a lot different. God bless you guys. Visit our website, youtube.com forward slash shock of God.